Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And my, how things have changed in the comic book industry. Uh huh. Uh, we're going to talk about comics. Two days in a row now, we're talking about comics because we make comics. We like comics, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. And we do watch the comic book industry. We've been watching the comic book industry for years. We made our. Dude. Living in and around the comic book industry. No, for a I while. come from web comics. You came from both, but yes. yeah. But we did a lot of conventions. We knew a lot of people. They used to bring us in to actually teach people how to do web comics. <laughs> like once upon a time, we had Back to, in we, the did, day. we did panels on world building, mm -hmm. and we taught people how to do web comics and where you know how to put your site up and how people get you people to find you and all that. We used to be the ones they bring in to teach other people how to do it. That was before we turned into Nazis. Yeah. God. Yeah. <laughs> We're exactly the same as we were then. We are the exact same people we were. Yes, uh, we are. Tired we of shit. We we haven't changed at all. We've just become a lot more uh, blunt, I think, because we, we recall back in the day there were certain things you weren't allowed to say, but it wasn't as bad as it is now. So one of the things you're not allowed to say about the comic book industry is that it is failing unless one of the mainstream comic book media outlets says it first. Just a couple weeks ago, some dumbass on Twitter. Well, someone was talking about comics and they were saying about the numbers being, you know, down. And they're like, where did you get that information, Clownfish TV? And then we're dumbasses and comics are fine, the comics are fine. And it's always been good. And what are you talking about? And they're still great. And I'm like, dude. Yeah. Go, yeah. Go, I remember saying, go look it up. You, you, you show me the proof. Bare minimum, I'm like, bitches. Dumbass. Bare minimum. So let's, let's talk about this because uh, we can kind of see a change in tone a change in tone on some of these Here's uh, your websites and my middle finger you can't see her middle finger yeah but neon she's, can i can uh, she's giving it to you not to me so let's 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 talk about this this is heidi mcdonald this is just a couple of days ago and no i don't know if anybody's talking about this or not but she has spent the last two or three years um basically saying hey comics are fine comics are great it's all good those charlatans on YouTube, not calling people out specifically, but just trying to be like, oh, people are trying to say comics aren't fine, but it's, it's not it's, true. Comics it's actually great. good because manga sales. Yeah, they keep, it's good if you little squint and you roll in all the manga sales and you roll in all the crowdfunders and then you tilt your, you tilt your head at 90 degrees. 45 degrees. Don't do it 90. That would break your neck. 45 <laughs> degrees. And you look at it and you're like. Oh, yeah, there. It's a little bit bigger. Yeah. yeah like that. Um, we had CBR doing this article uh, last year. Comic books are not dead. They're changing and thriving. Uh, Heidi, for the last, again, like two years, report periodical comic sales are up. Um, comics are great. Comics and graphic novel sales grew over 60% in 2021. We're going to look but at people some... People were stuck in their houses, and it was mostly manga. Yeah, but then uh, ICV2 comes in, and they're like, hey, the boom cycle goes bust, and now that brings us to this article a couple days ago that comics retailers are seeing an uncertain future. Because Don't things say. Things are not good. And one of the complaints is distribution. And, uh, you know, weirdly enough, uh, that has changed and people that are selling their, their content online are actually doing very well. I was going to say distribution. I don't understand how. Because they added, they, they gave a competitor to Diamond that's out there's there now. One or, yeah, yeah Lunar there's more, and... There's more distribution channels yeah. than ever before. Yeah. And then people, a lot of people are just going through Amazon or, you know, they're getting into Walmart now at different places. I would argue the opposite. Distribution is much easier now than ever before. Well, and that's, that's a double-edged sword for comic shops because, you know, books that you would have picked up at a comic shop, now you yes. can get on Amazon or that's at Walmart true. or at, you know... And it hurts comic shops. Right, but that is double edged sword. That's a good point. It is. So let's talk about this because it's, it's publishers too. I just did a video earlier today about uh, heavy metal shutting down, uh -huh. and um, now it's not all doom and gloom. Again, I think what's going to happen is we're going to have a massive shakeout of businesses, companies that were not healthy enough to survive. You know, and that's just kind of how capitalism works. But a lot yes. of people working in comics oh, don't like the concept of capitalism. Socialism. You should just pay us to sit on our asses at home and write comics that no one wants to lecture you people. And then the government pays us to do it. Yeah. So let's oh, let's propaganda. let's talk about this. Not trying to single Heidi McDonald out, but I saw this article and I thought it was very interesting given the tone of the stuff she's written over the last couple of years. It seems like her journalism skills are slowly returning and she's starting to snap back into reality because she used to actually be pretty good. When Bleeding Cool returned to journalism, but when Rich Johnson actually becomes a real journalist before Heidi McDonald again. You I, know? I mentioned that. I mentioned that in the heavy metal. Uh, I wasn't even in that video, so I 
I didn't know what you said. Yeah, no, because he's actually been covering the blow by blow of freelancers not getting paid, uh, editorial changes at the top and all of that. And I'm like, Rich Johnson has turned into a legit, uh, a legit journalist somehow at, by default, I think, because everybody else just kind of gave it up. And I think Heidi's too afraid to piss off her friends. Mm -hmm. You know, I, she knows better. She's been doing this a long time. Oh, yeah. These people, they get they so know better. salty. They like, know better. Oh, my God. They might they might kick me out of the Whisper Network and then, you know, go against me. It's like she knows better. She used to be. Comics Beat used to be one of the most reputable websites well, out there. I think it all blew up on their it faces did. too because I think what happened was because of these these you know these articles and these networks and all that shit they just became labeled as problematic people and now they you know the higher ups are like don't don't hire those people. Yeah. Cuz they'll just they'll just cause drama and try to tank you. Anyway, let's talk about let's talk about comics for twice in one day. I cannot believe it. Uh, you know, mark it on your calendars because it's probably not going to happen again. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, get a woohoo if you do. Uh, yeah. So Heidi has been writing uh, all kinds of stuff lately about comics and the chuds and how they're trying to spin a um, a uh, narrative that comics are failing. I had the one pulled up here. This was from let's see last year. Uh, comics, graphic novels, manga, periodicals, they're doing great during the pandemic. It's an encouraging story that has many reasons, strong product. People learn to do things better during lockdowns, increased media presence. It's true, though. It did do better during the pandemic, yeah. but that's when you encounter everything, including manga. I don't want to spend the rest of my life refuting comics and nons. You mean comics gate? You know, I know you mean comics gate. Comics Anons claims that comics, however they define it at the moment, are dying, but it's simply not true. This is a golden age. This is a golden ah, age. Enjoy it. Ah, this is a golden shower article. Uh, also, ICV2, they had an article, um, and I forget the guy's name. He, uh, I don't know if it was Graham McMillan, but it was raining money. Remember that one? Oh, it, yes. It's yes, raining yes, money. Yes, yes. Again, yes, for. Everybody but Western comic book creators creating comics in the direct market. Oh, and they also roll in the crowdfunders from people making these yes. big, they doing these huge crowdfunders. Yep. You know, they'll, 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 they'll like shit on like Eric July to his face, but then they'll roll his numbers in. Oh, yeah, yeah. With their sales numbers. Yeah. Or, like, or people like him, not necessarily him particularly. I don't think you that, know I, what I'm saying. Yeah, Eric July, I don't know if they because would. Because it's on his own site. It's on his own site. But so like people you like can't him are making it, like, yeah. okay, well, or you know, you have people like doing like the Keanu Reeves and stuff. They were counting that. How much does that so, make? Keanu, you know? Berserker? It was a couple million dollars. And, 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 Todd well, McFarlane and did a couple million that, dollars. They were yeah, that yeah. And I'll grant that was for a publisher. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like when EVS does comics, they rolled his numbers in if they're from like crowdfunders, like, you know, the, it, Kickstarter, Indiegogo, respected crowdfunders. Uh, platforms, they'll they'll roll them in. So they're they're counting manga sales, and they're counting that, and they're counting everything they can literally make it comic adjacent, you know, mainstream adjacent, just to to raise those numbers. So they're trying to blame everything, but because there are people, people are buying comics. I mean, we did look, back I, issues. They're buying back issues, but they're they're buying crowdfunders oh, too. Yeah, crowdfunders. Yes. You know, we've seen record numbers on crowdfunding. It's not just comics gate. We've seen record numbers on uh, crowdfunded books over the last couple of years, Kickstarter and Indiegogo uh, compared to what used to be. It used to be the average is like if you did 30 to 50,000, you're doing really good. Now it's like if you don't break six figures, it's like, eh, I whatever. think people are tired of superheroes for one. And two, they made so many changes to the characters people knew that people just don't care anymore. Like we did yeah. with G.I. Joe and everything else too. They went in and they just ruined the characters for, you know, yes, queen points. And then they lost their entire audience. And then they're like, and then you call on your audience shitty people. You have to buy my book or you're a shitty person. And they're like, okay, well, hand me that toilet paper because I'm shitty, you know, and walked away. So let, let's, this is funny. This is what oh, she's. Oh, I'm sorry. This, I didn't even know what you were going to read. Oh, no, that's okay. I, I don't mean gonna... to. I haven't been all, I, I had pen up demand for my videos today and I wasn't here. So now I'm just like letting it fly. Okay. So one thing is certain. It's uncertain. We're in a post pandemic world, but what that means among swirling economic factors, looming AI replacements. <laughs> Sometimes for the a, better. A wave of book bannings, like <laughs> a comic skate. You mean like Dr. Seuss? Like Dr. Seuss and comic skate books. Punishing weather disasters, and you get my drift. Wait, so wait, 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 wait. That's Comics why. Comics are doing shitty because of the weather. And the book bannings, yes. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Seriously, that's what she said. Yeah, I think I think she's talking about that one, was it a first, second graphic novel where the kid's sucking the other kid off or something? That That's the one. You remember oh. that look on your face? You remember that was in the... Yes. I thought you were talking about weather. And I was like, No, oh. no, no, no. That's called snow job. No. Um, <laughs> like, 
No, it was yeah. There was a uh, an explicit ish uh, yeah, graphic no, novel that about. was a lot of. They had yeah some some different books that were showing up in school libraries that probably shouldn't have been there. Uh, at least not in the age ranges that they were showing up in. Right, and that we had librarians that were like, "That's great, Timmy. You should learn all about this." Uh, yeah, here's, anyway. a, here's a print version. Here's the graphic novel. Take it home too. No, don't have to ask pictures. <laughs> and, show you exactly how to. You know, emphasis on graphic, right? I mean, look, I don't believe in the book. I don't believe in banning books, but I think uh, parents should should have to sign something for little Timmy to take I'm a that teacher, book out. and I don't believe in certain books with certain content being a public and certain school. things being shown being in a school with children under certain ages. Um, I'm sorry, I do not, and I will stand by that because okay. you know. You don't want, I don't want little kids like in second grade going and pulling this book and you're like, what the hell is that? You know what I well, mean? Well, I think in that case, this is a whole nother tangent, but I think in that case, that book should be reserved for older kids and it should require like, parental. Like 11th and 12th graders. Yes. Uh, it should require parental permission. Like, and we actually had our, our uh, school library. I remember there were some books that had dicey content and you had to actually have your parents sign something and say, yeah, I know that they're taking this out. I'm okay with them taking it out. You know, it was, there, it was almost like they had the books behind the mm-hmm. behind the counter, kind of like you know what I'm saying. Uh, we're talking about a school. We're not oh, talking yeah, about no, a public no. library. We're talking about a school. Right. Anyway, oh, I saw that school too. I know. I'm just they saying that yeah. these people get mad about it. But I'm still trying to figure out what the punishing weather disaster was. But okay. Oh, I don't know. Uh, anyway, anyway, uh, David Harbor of uh, David Harper of Sketch Magazine okay. put this piece out, and he basically has a state of the comic book industry right now. It's not good. They said that the pre-pandemic sales to post-pandemic costs is something we're all dealing with. It's no fun. There's also the general glut of content everywhere. As Batista put it brutally, 70% of publishers could disappear tomorrow, and 90% of the customers wouldn't even notice. That's probably true, and I, let's make it so. No, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be a bitch, but I'm just that, like... That is true, though. I mean, the, the reality is is that we have way more people, and a lot of people said this, we have way more people that want to work in comics than the industry can currently support, okay? Um, and- well, you also have... It used to be like, you know, you'd have your mainstream comics and some indie books, but that's what you'd have. And people could pick from those. Yeah. But now, you like you said, there's so many people that can do it, and you can do it online, and you can give away comics for free as much as you want, and you can go, you know, there's all different people publishing their own stuff. So there's like a, you know, a, a smorgasbord of, you know, comics for all different flavors and types that you can go out and do. And the problem is, like, the cream rises to the top. So the ones that are really good, you know, stay popular, but then the ones that, you know, aren't, you know, fall off a cliff. And what happened was they had comics and characters that were popular, and they changed them all. And then told their customers to fuck off. Uh, so this is interesting. She she is starting to snap into reality. Uh, she said, "Welcome to the party." Welcome to the Heidi. party, Heidi. Uh, it took you long. We enough. never said it was a good thing. It just I, you, no. You know, I'm, I'm not people, people cheering like, this you know, on. Like, you're, I, I think, you know, you're, you're you're like oh we're winning, gloating, and, and like, I'm not, not gloating. We just want people to realize there was a problem like years ago, so it could be fixed. But you didn't, and now that's why seventy percent of the publishers could disappear tomorrow, and ninety yeah. percent of the customers wouldn't care. Yes, the the cancer was curable when it was stage one. It's now yeah. stage four. Exactly. So, and then we're I, trying. I'm sorry. Us, other people like us, we're trying to warn people, but all you want to do is put your your you put your fingers in ears and go la 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 Nazis. Are are there people? Are there people taking delight in this? Yeah. Um, are we those people? No. Um, I mean, I point and laugh at the stupidity of the comics industry, but we still have friends that well, work in the comic book industry. Well, well, had, we, had, we had more. We had more yeah. than we do now. Again, but. for those who are new, uh, we had more friends. And all Neon did, like in 2017, 20, was that what it was? Yeah. All he did was yeah. write an article for another blog we were on saying, oh, my gosh, Marvel's numbers are down. Should we be concerned? That article, just writing a simple piece like that, not knowing anything about Comics Gate, Got our a bunch of our friends to block us, label us as comics gate, and call, and and let us to where we are now. A friends that we've known for years, friends that we helped get jobs yeah. for, yeah. friends that we had met in person that wasn't just online. Yeah, all like it's just unfollowed, unreal, us, it was us, unreal. Us, and we're just like, what is going on? Because they assumed that we were like comics gate when we didn't even know what comics gate was. It was, I just no a, it was just a point like, oh, this isn't good. No, That's like all what? We did. Yeah, I was just like, what the hell happened? Because I I noped out of comics, mainstream comic book industry in like 2014, 2015. Because there wasn't any money in it. There was no money in it then, and you know uh, we had you well, know no money kids in the mortgage. It really isn't the mainstream. No, it really isn't. No, I'm talking mainstream. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
And, you know, I, I just kind of looked back. I'm like, man, Marvel's doing really bad. What the hell's going on here? It's like, well, my God, they're changing everything. And there are mainstream media articles about how retailers are furious. And I put, yeah, that's all it took. That's all it took was saying, hey, guys, there might be a problem. There might be a problem. You're literally Hitler. In I'm like, block. Cause, cause they were afraid it was going to cost them a gig. Oh, everybody from that. I worked with the IDW blocked me or unfollowed me. And we didn't even and do like, anything. Like what, the what is going fuck? on? You know, and we didn't even know. We didn't even know what Comics Gate was. I didn't even know what it well, was. We did. You kind of, you kind of knew a little okay, bit. So let me, you let, did know a little bit. So let me, let me tell you a little bit about that. Cause here's the thing. Um, when I, cause of all this craziness going on, I'm like, okay, what is this comics gate thing going on? Oh my God. There's a Nazi making videos on YouTube supposedly is what's going on. Some white supremacist is making a bunch of videos. Let's go look into this. Cause this guy sounds like a real piece of work. Well, that would have been your boy, Zach. Mm -hmm. And I started watching his videos and I'm like, these are very normie takes. Mm -hmm. and he's not wrong. And he's not wrong. These are very normie takes that you would have heard in a comic shop 10 years ago. Not even 10 years ago. Like Not years even, prior. yeah. And I'm like, why is everybody so ass mad that he doesn't like all these characters being changed? There's, there's nothing Most wrong. Most people didn't. Most people didn't. I, it's like, I heard worse in the comic shop as a kid. People would get into fights over, you know, the who was the best Green Lantern. You know, it was Guy Gardner, it was Hal Jordan, whatever. And they would get in freaking, literally screaming matches over fucking Green Lantern characters, right? And, there's um, a comma in there. Yeah, well, that's, that's current year. Now, fast forward <laughs> to current year. But, but like, this is norm. This was normal, like nerd talk. This is how it, it always has been. But we have a new crew of creators that came from Tumblr and they couldn't handle it. Well, they, just wanted, they just wanted to make the character. They wanted to change everything to be what they wanted it to be instead of being caretakers or whatever. Yeah. They wanted their own anyway, OCs. Yeah, anyway. And so, and you ended up actually being one of uh, the people that had told him some things anyway. <laughs> Yeah. Um, no, he's, he's, and actually now I don't even think, uh, I don't you even think that I was, uh, but that was after people pissed us off. That was after they pissed like, us fine. off. Fine. You're going to be it's an like, asshole. Well, okay. Fine. 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 Fine then. Anyway, but, uh, he's, he doesn't consider himself comics gate now. He, mm -hmm. I don't think we he never has. consider ourselves comics gate. I'm not comics gate. I just, you know, we're on the I internet. Mean, we have and, things we do agree on and there's things we disagree on. Yeah. And that's I mean, cool. I think everybody has that. So. Yeah, everybody has that. I mean, I can agree that right now the future is with uh, independent content creators, mm -hmm. and I can agree that the the comic book industry, the mainstream comic book industry, is is fucking dead. It's just gone. And they did it to themselves. And they did it to themselves. And there was, you know, so and many. I can agree that telling your fans to fuck off is probably not a smart thing to do. Not a smart thing to do. Um, no. And there have been some. I will. There have been some creators. I think uh, Aubrey Sitterson was one where he basically was like, yeah, you know what? This isn't good for my career. Maybe I shouldn't. Should because he was the one that 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 uh, was his GI Joe writer that was going out and causing stirring shit up on the message boards, and that caused the GI Joe comic sales to tank, which led to the book being canceled. And then, as I understand it, it almost led to IDW losing the Hasbro license entirely. Yeah, they back lost then. it already, haven't they? they? They've lost it now. It's going to sky. I'm just like it, it, I don't know. There's just so much stupidity around the whole thing, and then you got the Whisper Networks and everything else going on. It's like this is just fucking stupid. And it's all, all fucking all stupid. For what, to what end? To ruin comics completely for everyone? Yeah, that's, and that's what. You if did. we can't have it, if we can't have it, if we can't be successful, then we have to destroy it for everybody yeah. else. We got to kick that ladder. You know. Anyway. So let's, yeah, I've chatted with a few, this is Heidi McDonald. I've chatted with a few folks since the piece came out who I rolled or pointed to success stories. And it's better than 2019. Uh -uh. And it's still true for the industry at large, but there's no denying something's up. Oh, what? <laughs> Heidi, come on. I know oh. you're smarter than this. Come oh on. God. Come on. One of the biggest issues I hear over and over is we need a new saga. Uh, that undeniably addictive hit everybody's talking about. Um, they said it's not a knock on. So they said there basically is no big hit right now. No mm -hmm. indie hit. It's not a knock on the talents involved. Everywhere you look, there are incredible creators making comics that would have been groundbreaking lightning flashes in a smaller no. industry. You got rid of the ones that could to replace them with your friends. And it's not the same. It's getting harder and harder to stand out. That basically true. Making anything competent now is, is standing out. But the problem is you're not allowed to do what's best for you. You right, got to do what that. your peers approve The ones who get a chance to stand out have to hit so many check boxes and their stuff is sometimes is good, but sometimes it's not good, but they hit the right check boxes. So they get a turn where somebody who might be phenomenal, but not have as many check boxes or have no check boxes, don't get a turn. And you might have your next saga type book out there and you didn't get a chance because they were a white dude. Yeah. 
Yeah, I you mean, know? there's they a were a straight woman. There's a whole lot of crazy shit going on. They're talking about how younger audiences are going to manga and webtoon oh, style. Been. They Marvel, were one of the ones they brought in for that kind of stuff to to promote it. Yeah, Marvel and DC are aware of it, so they're branching out. Yes. And I know DC just did manga; they greenlit some manga. And they're hiring people to do those kind of books on webtoons or do those kind of comics on webtoons. They're hiring outside the country for that. Yeah, so they're talking about the SAG after strikes, and they said that there's there's a a trickle down effect. Basically, if people aren't invested in Hollywood properties, that they're not going to buy the comics of said properties. Like how, like but like they comics were, they gets were comics before they were Hollywood properties, and you had an audience that came with them before they went to Hollywood, and then when they became big at Hollywood, instead of letting them have comics that were like what they saw, you wouldn't change all the characters for no damn good reason. And now Hollywood's trying to change characters for no damn good reason and putting like, you know, we don't need Iron Man, we got Ironheart. And no one wants it. Every mistake that Marvel made from 2015 to 2017 is being made in Hollywood right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, like you can absolutely positively add new diverse characters to an existing universe or franchise. I am 100% on board with that. Add new characters, please do, but do not change. Do not make Iceman gay. There's nothing for no reason. There, for no reason. Well, There's nothing in this history we to mentioned indicate manga that. And stuff. Manga's kicking your ass, and so is things like anime and K drama. And what are the networks picking up right now? Because y'all are striking more anime and more K drama. That's the thing. If I were not doing my own stuff, right? We do our own stuff, and we hire artists, and we do. If I were not doing my own stuff and I were going to get into publishing comics now, the first thing I would do is go license some manga that hasn't been licensed because I know it's going to sell. Mm -hmm. As long as it's good. As long as it's good. But even mediocre manga outsells That's sad. Marvel and DC. Truly mediocre shit is outselling Marvel and DC. Kids do not care. So she goes through all this She and you can go read the article for yourself, go to the site, read it for yourself. Um, they go through and they talk about, you know, different retailers and everybody's like, oh, has, has totally different stories. Nobody knows anything. I've written many of these industry overview pieces over the years and I usually end with some variant of content as king. Nobody knows anything. Heidi, YouTubers have been telling you what the problem is for years. You guys- my friends because we're so much smarter and more important. How can you not know? You you are willfully ignoring, like, look, you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. You might not agree with the political hot takes. You might not agree with the language. You might think that people are being overly harsh with their criticism of the comic book industry. But that doesn't mean that they're completely wrong. That doesn't mean that everything they're saying is completely wrong. When you've got many people telling you the same things over and over and over, and it's demonstrated with diminishing returns, maybe it's time to listen. Well, I know. Like there, I give an example. Like I, I was in PTO for years, and there was a person that I was, I did not get along with. Okay, and I did not like this person, but they had ideas, and sometimes they were not wrong. Just because I didn't like them, didn't mean they were wrong. And there were times people were like, "Well, why did you, why didn't you just tell her to get bent? Why did you like listen to her idea?" I'm like, "Because it was a good idea, and she wasn't wrong." Well, you don't like her. I'm like, "Yes, I don't like her, but she still wasn't wrong." You know, you have to be into a place where you can actually look at things objectively. And people are too busy worrying about their feelings and how triggered they're going to be. They don't actually listen to what's being said. They're too busy being pissed because they're mad. They don't want to hear it. That things that were true, they dis disregard it. And it's still true today. But they could have got ahead of it. And they didn't listen. Sometimes He-Man and Skeletor have to team up to fight a bigger villain. That's right. You know, you know sometimes you do. I saw there's a bunch of comments on here. What were those like? Oh, we'll see here. I, I was kind of going through. Basically, she's like, we don't know what the future's like. There there were going to be other options, but they disappeared. Substack and Zest World. But we all know oh, oh most people, even publishers, are only sticking with this industry because they love it, well, not because it's a cash cow. Something like Substack and stuff. Didn't they have it? They were starting to do pretty well, and they raised hell about some stuff going over there, got rid of people, and then it went down the shithole again because certain people didn't want other people gone. Yeah. Uh, clickbait headline. Have you become bleeding cool? Our store will be our 2022 numbers. Is that by is that with back new issues books? Or current stuff? Yeah. Uh, and he might be the exception. There might be exceptions out there. There, you know, if you're selling a bunch of manga, you're selling a bunch of pop vinyls, you're selling a bunch of uh, back issues, or yeah, even, evergreen trades always sell. Yes. You know, we have a, we, they, 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 my store, that, and they don't sell things like manga. They don't sell here, but they sell DC books, more of a core. And then they said about, you know, evergreen traits. And it's a lot of back issues, what we're hearing. And like pop vinyls and that kind of shit. Yeah. Are, are new floppy comics making up the bulk of your sales? I don't think, or are new graphic novels, they're not manga, making up the bulk of your sales. I don't think that that's the, 
that's the case. Uh, may I suggest taking Bald DC? They don't do creator owned. Um, so they're basically just fighting over the. It's this guy fighting with uh, everybody else. Oh, so that's else. what the like, comments is one guy yeah, fighting everybody yeah, else? Yeah, pretty much. He's answering everybody. That's um, one of those. Okay. Why not ask for prepay? We get we get to the bottom here, though. This is funny. This site can never, ever seem to balance reporting the news with the need to lecture the reader from a position of assumed self-importance and objective righteousness. See also the comics journal, which disappeared so far up its own behind that I usually think the truth is the exact opposite of whatever propaganda they're spewing out. Um... I, that's the thing. A lot of a lot of people, a lot of readers, don't trust these blogs anymore either because they've been helping to cover for the failing industry. Well, I mean, a lot of them are in the networks. A lot of them are in these networks. It's been proven. They're in these these Facebook groups and so these you know, and and the the truth has been there for years. All you had to do was listen, but you're too damn stubborn, and it could have been it could have been changed. Things could have been salvaged. And yeah, now exactly. It's, just, it's too damn late. So we're gonna wrap it up. Yep. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye. Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's thereef.support.